Hello again, everyone. Welcome back to my channel. Today, I have another laptop review for you guys. In the studio right now is the System76 Serval WS laptop. That's what I'm going to be reviewing in this video right here. And I had a lot of demand for a review on this laptop. Well, actually, I had one person on Twitter ask me, but it only takes that because I love doing hardware reviews. And any excuse I can make to check out a new laptop, I'm definitely going to jump on that. So let's go ahead and check out the System76 Serval WS or Workstation laptop right now. And here it is in all of its glory. As you can see, it is a thicker machine. This is a 15 inch laptop right here, but it's more or less a desktop replacement because it packs some serious horsepower in the chassis. So here on the left side of the laptop, you, you can see that we have an ethernet jack. We have two USB-C ports right there, two USB-3 ports, and also an SD card reader as well. And then on the right side, we have a series of audio ports and also a few additional USB ports, so nothing too surprising there. Here on the back, you can see the hinges, which are actually really strong, but you can still open the lid without using both of your hands. There's also several ports on the back for plugging in multiple displays, so you can actually have four displays if you count the internal one. And then you can also see where you plug in the power adapter. That's the four prong adapter port that you see right there. And then of course we have the really large fan vents because when you have a laptop that's super powerful, you definitely need to keep it cool. And here I have a shot of the power brick. It's actually quite large. And you can see exactly the size compared to the laptop itself. Again, this is a 15 inch chassis on this model, so the power brick is actually quite large. And then here on the bottom, you can see some of the vents. It's actually got quite a bit of ventilation, but what's probably more interesting is that on the top right corner, you can see that there is what appears to be a battery. Yes, it is removable, and that is very important. Kudos to System76 for using a removable battery in 2020 because a lot of manufacturers, they just don't really give you that anymore. And here we have a shot of the screen itself. I have a picture that I actually took. I do photography for fun and it kind of looks like this chimp was posing for me. But you can see the colors on the screen. It, it's actually really bright. I love the display on this laptop. And here's another shot up close so you could basically see a little bit more clearly the quality of the display. I did dim the lights as well. And as you can see, it's bright. There's a lot of colors. And I have no complaints about this screen at all. It is a great display. And here we have the keyboard. And I really love this keyboard quite a bit. It's not a chiclet keyboard. It's the older smile key style from way back that I really do enjoy. It's almost like a throwback to when I used to use Dell Latitude laptops back when they had decent keyboards. And the keyboard here is awesome and the key travel is great. It's not shallow like some of the other manufacturers out there. It has great key travel. And as you can see, it is a backlit keyboard. And as you can see, you can actually change the color of the backlight to customize that and choose your favorite, which is really cool. So that was a look at the hardware. What I'm going to do now is go ahead and show you some screen capture from the laptop itself. And I'm going to show you some of the specs and various things. All right, so what I'm doing right now is I am actually recording straight off the HDMI port of the laptop to basically show you some of the graphs and the specs and terminal output, things like that. Now, first of all, let's check out the GNOME system information. Go to details. And here we can see some of the specs of the unit that was supplied to me for the purposes of this review. 32 gigabytes of RAM, some of that is reserved. 
The processor is an Intel Core i9-9900K, and that is 3.6 gigahertz with 16 cores. I'll get into what that exactly means in just a moment. For graphics, we have a GeForce RTX 2070, which is a fantastic video card. I'll launch a game here in a few minutes to give you guys a look at some of the performance. Since this is Pop! OS 1910, that's what was shipped on it. We have GNOME 3.34.1 and a 500 gigabyte SSD on this unit. And by the way, if you are curious, this wallpaper and everything, I really made myself at home on this machine. I wanted to use it as my day-to-day, -day daily driver, if you will. I've done a lot of work on it. So basically, I've even put my wallpaper and everything. So obviously, if you get this shipped with Pop! OS, you are not going to have that same wallpaper. But anyway, here's the terminal, which I also customized. complete with a unicorn in my bash prompt, because if you can put a unicorn in your bash prompt, then why the heck not? Anyway, let's check out that CPU. So proc CPU info. Actually, I should probably make the font size a bit smaller here. So if I scroll up a bit, we can see some details about the CPU. Now, one thing that's interesting, we see the clock speed here at 3.6 gigahertz. So you might be thinking that that's the turbo boost speed. No, actually, that's the speed of the CPU. It actually can turbo boost to 5 gigahertz if it needs a performance jump, believe it or not, which is crazy. In fact, this machine, I have to say, has been performing very, very well, which is to be expected because this is a desktop processor, not a mobile processor, which is one of the big selling points of this machine. Now, according to this, it's saying that we have 16 cores. Actually, we have eight, but it's 16 when you take hyper-threading into account. In case you're curious, the thermal design power of this CPU is rated at 95 watts. That doesn't mean it's always using 95 watts, but that's its rating when it is under load. So that's going to take a bit more power than other laptops. I mean, it is a desktop processor, so it is going to take more power to run this laptop, which is probably one of the reasons why the power supply is so large. But anyway, clear the screen here. I run HTOP, we can see the 16 cores. Again, it's eight, but 16 if you take into account the hyper-threading feature. So that shows up as 16 cores here in HTOP. You can see that I'm not utilizing much. I'm only using about 3.4 gigabytes of RAM. My overall load is only about two or so right now, so I'm not really taxing the machine at the moment. Before I hit the record button, I basically just opened up a bunch of browser tabs. I was doing some research, and then I hit the record button. I recorded a video, so I'm not really using it all too much right now or taxing it, as you can see by the low overall CPU usage. So if I quit out of here, I'll give you the LSPCI output, as I do in most of my reviews. Just in case you guys are curious what hardware is present in this machine, so we can see things like the processor family, the power management controller, also the NVIDIA chipset, wireless card, Ethernet controller, and things like that. So if you were curious or you want to research compatibility with any of these components, go ahead and feel free to do that. Now speaking of NVIDIA, I'll go ahead and open up the NVIDIA settings. So the font size is quite a bit smaller on this. So if I click around a bit, we can see that the display panel is 1920 by 1080. That's the resolution. They do have a higher resolution model available if you need that. But 1080p is good enough for me, so I didn't ask for anything higher than that. So here we could check out the actual specs of the GPU itself. It's an RTX 2070. It has eight gigabytes of video RAM. So here we could check the overall utilization as well as some specs. We can also go here to thermal settings. And right now we are relatively idle at about 46 Celsius. I'll go ahead and leave this up. I'm going to launch a game so I can show you guys some general performance. And then when I close the game, we'll be able to see where the temperature was at the time that I closed the game. 
Now that reminds me, I know you guys are going to ask about the fan noise. Basically, that's a very important concern for most people. It is for me as well, because I simply don't like noisy laptops. This laptop is not noisy at all. In fact, I rarely ever hear the fan unless I'm running, you know, basically a job that requires a lot of the CPU or I'm playing a game. If I'm simply browsing the internet and just using this thing casually, I just never hear it. It's essentially silent. But when you're playing a high-end game, the fan can get pretty loud, which is to be expected. You can't really expect your laptop to be silent anyway when you're playing a game. That goes without saying. But when I'm not doing that, again, it's pretty silent. So I'll go ahead and launch Doom. There we go, it's launching. I can already hear the fan is beginning to spin up just a little bit. Not sure if it's actually even going to come through in the video at all. And I have the audio muted. I definitely want to hear the fan. And I'm looking at the recording PC. I don't think it's picking up the fan right now. It's basically just below what the microphone will pick up. But I'll go ahead and start the game. And let's see what happens. I'm playing with the touchpad. I don't have a mouse attached to the machine right now, so I'm not going to play this too long. Just to give you a basic idea. Here we have Doom. Now look at the frames on the upper right hand corner. I mean that's crazy. I don't have it capped or V-Sync enabled or anything like that. It's basically hovering at just below 200. That's pretty good. And again with the touchpad it's just not going to work that well. The fan is going crazy. I personally don't mind it though because, you know, I'm asking it to play Doom, so I understand, but it is what it is. And you can see, again, I'm not very good at it. I'm just basically just trying to see what kind of performance I can expect. But you get the idea. It's running very, very well. I use Doom because this is the game that I have, you know, basically the only one I have that is considered at least kind of high-end to really push a laptop. Go ahead and close it. And we can see that it was at 66 Celsius while the game was running, or thereabouts. I think it's really awesome that Doom is handled so well on this machine, but I guess that's not so surprising considering this model features desktop processors, and this review unit was equipped with an RTX 2070, so Doom isn't really a challenge at all in a configuration like that. I bet I could probably push this even further, but Doom is probably the most advanced game that I have in my Steam library, which may or may not be saying much. But in the future, if you guys have any suggestions for a game that takes more horsepower to run than Doom, let me know in the comments below, and the next time I do any gaming videos or anything like that, I might just use that as an example. So overall, I've really enjoyed the time that I've spent with this machine, and thanks again to System76 for giving me yet another opportunity to check out some new hardware. I really appreciate it. Now before I close the video, I wanted to give you guys my overall summary, my general opinion of this machine, my closing thoughts if you will. And first of all, I mean it's a heavy laptop. That was my first impression when I took it out of the box. That'll probably be yours if you were to buy one. And that's to be expected. It is a workstation class machine, essentially a desktop replacement. Not something that you would take around with you while you're traveling or something like that. But the build quality is really, really good. I mean, there's no flex in the chassis anywhere at all. It feels sturdy throughout. So it definitely feels like a very well-made laptop for sure. The palm rest is also something I like about this machine. It's a positive and a negative. I'll get to the negative in a minute. The positive being the rubberized feel. It's very comfortable to lay my wrists on it, and I don't feel like my wrists are going to be strained anytime soon for resting on it for too long of a time. It just feels very comfortable. When it comes to the keyboard, it's basically my favorite keyboard of any System76 laptop so far. Now it could be because it has somewhat of a retro 
old school feel to it, which, you know, kind of takes me back to the old Dell Latitude days, back when Dell Latitudes uh, really had decent keyboards. Um, but no, it actually feels like a very good laptop keyboard. The key travel is great, very comfortable to type on. And that's a very important thing to me, the keyboard, because I type a lot, a lot of terminal commands. I'm a writer. I do a lot of typing. So if the keyboard isn't good, I can't even use the machine. But this is, in my opinion, the best keyboard that I've used. I definitely enjoyed the typing experience quite a bit. When it comes to the screen, the screen is very bright and it looks great regardless of what I'm doing, whether I'm playing a game, running terminal commands, browsing the web, watching videos, it doesn't matter. The screen is bright, it's clear, it looks crisp. I can't ask for more than that. It's a great screen. Now it is a 1080p display, which some of you guys might prefer a 4K panel, and you can have that in the larger version of this laptop. They do offer a 4K screen. This review unit has a 1080p display, which is more than fine for me, because with Linux, I can arrange my workflow across different workspaces, so I don't feel like I need a high density screen or anything like that. But for those of you doing graphics and um, 3D modeling, you can get a 4K display as well. Now when it comes to battery life, because I know this question is going to come up, I mean this is not the laptop you're going to buy if battery life is something extremely important to you. Now you'll probably get, I mean, two hours, maybe you'll squeeze a little bit more than that. But again, this is a workstation class laptop, so I consider the battery to be something like a built-in UPS, so if the power goes out, you don't lose your work. This isn't an ultra-portable device you're going to travel with, so battery really isn't the um, intended design is not a very important aspect of this type of machine. Now you can squeeze two hours. If you crank everything up, it'll be less than two hours. You might be able to stretch it to two and a half, but that's just to give you an overall opinion of the battery. Again, this is a desktop replacement, not something designed to be ultra portable. When it comes to the speakers, the sound quality is decent. Now I'm not an expert when it comes to laptop speakers nor am I an audio technician for that matter, so this opinion is more of a general one. The speakers and sound quality sounds decent. It does, in my opinion, sound better than average. However, uh, so far I have never been impressed by any laptop speaker audio quality of any laptop that I've ever used, and I've used a bunch, but I do think that the fact that this has a decent quality of sound is a step above most. I don't Feel like anyone's going to accuse this laptop of having the best sound quality in the world but it is decent and very far from the worst so i think you could do a lot worse than the sound quality on this machine now there are a couple negatives or i don't want to really really say negative because it might depend on other factors but first of all the palm rest i, I did mention that i enjoyed the fact that the palm rest feels rubberized that's pretty cool definitely like that but it seems like a fingerprint magnet and I find myself cleaning it quite a bit because it just gives off a look every now and then that it looks dirty even though it's really not and I have to wipe the fingerprints away. So if you're the type of person that hates fingerprints on your machine, you're probably going to be annoyed by that because it seems like every time I touch it I'm leaving fingerprints behind. And another thing that's kind of unusual is that there's a clicking noise coming from this machine. It appears to be the sound card. So when it's going to play audio, it'll click when the sound card comes on to play that audio. And then, um, you know, you might notice that. And at first it's kind of like, well, what the heck is that? I didn't really know. And then I caught on that it correlates to sound. So I get the impression that it's turning off the audio qual or the audio card for saving power. And that could be the reason, but just keep that in mind. You, you'll hear an audible click before it plays any kind of sound. And I find that that's a lot better when I disable the sound effects on Pop! OS because then it's only playing audio when I absolutely need it to. So I only hear the click before I'm playing it like a music video or something like that. So it's not so bad at that point. For me, the highlight of this machine is the desktop quality performance. I mean, it has a desktop CPU inside, so that's to be expected. But this is a machine for people that want horsepower in a laptop chassis. So if you're a gamer, or maybe you are some sort of an engineer doing some kind of uh, professional work, I really do think that this is a great machine for you. It's not for those of you that want an ultra portable machine to travel with. I mean, let's face it, it's too heavy for that, but it's not for that use case anyway. 
but if you're looking for raw performance, I think that you'll do well with this machine. I also like the fact that it has a removable battery. So, you know, if you don't have to throw the laptop away if the battery goes bad someday. And let's face it, batteries only last for so long. And, you know, I know I'm being overly dramatic with the throw the laptop away comment, but let's face it, it's actually somewhat of a chore to replace batteries on laptops nowadays. They kind of give me the impression that a lot of these companies are making disposable laptops. But you can replace the battery, and I think System76 needs to be praised for that because I do think that that's something we should still have all across the board industry-wide. In addition, you can also connect three external displays to this laptop. So you can have a total of four if you count the internal display. So if you want a desk full of monitors, well, you know what, have at it because this laptop can support multiple displays, which is pretty cool. And overall, I think the performance is great. I enjoyed my time with this machine. I can't say that enough. And thanks again to System76 for giving me the opportunity. And again, if you're looking for something that's focused on raw power, but in a laptop chassis, then this is definitely a good fit for those of you looking for that type of machine. With that said, thanks again for watching. I hope you enjoyed this review. And subscribe to my channel if you haven't already done so. I have some awesome videos coming up. Stay tuned. Thanks for checking out my video. I really appreciate it. If you found it useful, click that like button. And if you haven't already done so, make sure you subscribe so you'll see the latest content as soon as it becomes available. If you want to help me out, there's links down below for my Patreon page, as well as links for purchasing my Linux books, and also my affiliate store, which has a listing of Linux-compatible hardware that I've actually tested personally. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.